Rania, if I could turn to you, um, you know, so, f so much of your career, you've had a focus on stabilizing and growing emerging markets. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to ask in general, based on your own experience, what role do you see the private sector, private investment playing in helping to promote peace? And number two, especially given your own background with the central bank, um, what role can the central bank uh, play and public policy in general in reducing risk of private investment or even more incentivizing private investment? Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me to this panel. Um, something which is uh, very important to keep in our back, uh, in the back of our mind, is that fragility is not only about violence and conflict. Hmm. Fragility uh, has different sources. It could be ineffective uh, economic institutions, mismanagement of economic policy, which leads to poverty and inequality. So fragility is not only about um, a, a conflict, which could be resolved through peaceful. Uh, mechanisms or unpeaceful mechanisms, but it is the role of public policy actually to try at the very onset to, through um, uh, what I would call building uh, very clear institutional policy frameworks to avoid uh, states going into fragility. Right. And this is extremely crucial if we want to incentivize the private sector. And why is that? The private sector, and we have um, both the IFC and, and, and international companies here, uh, is looking for states that have transparent, uh, accountable, uh, and uh, well-communicated policies, because uh, that by itself reduces the risk of coming into a country, and that incentivizes the private sector to come in. So uh, when we say uh, a policy framework, what is very important is to have very clear objectives and the state able to translate how it's going to use specific instruments to meet these objectives. There's a tendency uh, when a problem comes up that the, you know, the, the public policy sometimes uh, resorts to very short-sighted procedures to solve a short-term problem. But these procedures in themselves actually exacerbate uh, uh, what mm. might be the sources of fragility. So what I would say is that uh, policymakers have to be very mindful uh, when it comes to uh, communicating transparent policy frameworks. And I put frameworks here over and over and, uh, because sometimes uh, it is overlooked. And as we are uh, here in Davos thinking about uh, the new narrative, um, there is a social contract, a new social contract, which has to be, I think, on the minds of everyone. Uh, and that includes uh, all stakeholders being part of uh, mm -hmm. contributing to that framework. If I may follow up, you, you know, you served a very critical time in Egypt in the Central Bank. It was during the Arab Spring and afterward. Now, how did you think about then using bank policies to create a more positive environment, you know, create jobs for young people to think about a more peaceful future? Um, I think uh, the first thing that was on our mind uh, as a central bank in these very turbulent uh, uh, periods because it was, I mean, it started in 2000, and, you know, it's the, the anniversary, the sixth anniversary of uh, the revolution is on the 25th of January, so um, uh, it's a week away. Uh, I think the, the key element uh, was to uh, repeat the message that the central bank is independent and that we do not have a political stance. We are an institution uh, that tailors to macroeconomic stability. We did not want the public to lose confidence in the banking sector, uh, and thankfully we avoided any banking run. Of course, we had uh, uh, issues related to um, you know, typical drawdown in reserves, capital outflows, uh, but overall there was a, a very important effort from our side uh, to step away from politics, and that was giving us very uh, much confidence uh, with the public as well as with international community uh, whether it's IFIs uh, or the private sector that was in the country and decided not to leave. Oh, great, thank you. Mm -hmm.